Hello there. Let's fire up this gaming PC. I've already installed Windows on it. I just want to show you a few things on the desktop. So, how are we doing out there? Yeah, any, any minute now. Ah. That's better. I think. Hello? Great. I thought it was great. <sighs> ah. There we are. What you just saw was a startup process of a fresh install of Windows 11 on a hard disk drive. I haven't bogged the system down with tons of programs, and you saw it took well over 60 seconds for Windows to finally load. And before you ask, no, there's nothing in the system that is old by today's standards. There's a Ryzen 7 7700 in here. That's a Zen 4 CPU, only a generation old by this point, but still very snappy, and an RTX 2060 Super, 32 gigs of DDR5, and, uh, well, the case doesn't matter, but if you must ask, it is a Zalman i4. So nothing about this system is old, nothing is slow, save the hard disk drive. That is our one bottleneck. And in this video, I'm gonna show you just how big a difference an upgrade from a hard disk drive can make. I hope you'll stay with me. Micro Center was recently rated best overall tech retailer by PC Mag Readers. So if you haven't already, be sure to swing by a store near you and see why. Browse hundreds of shelves during the holiday season for excellent deals on a variety of tech products, including racing sim gear, graphics cards, and laptops. Speaking of, check out Qualcomm Microsoft Surface laptops in store at steep discounts. Micro Center is also the exclusive AMD Ryzen 5 7600X 3D carrier. You can snag a B650 motherboard and DDR5 in a platform bundle and save 130 bucks in the price. Process. They are the bundle king, that's for sure. Also keep a look out for the new Santa Clara location coming in 2025. Sign up for early access and receive a free 128 gig flash drive when the store opens. You can find some of the best deals around in PC tech at a micro center, and you can learn more about their latest deals and news by clicking the links below. To kick things off, I would like to clarify this video's title. You probably clicked here assuming the system we'd be using would be old because that's what the title says. Greg, this is not an old PC. This is barely a generation old. And yes, while that may be true, many of the benchmarks you'll see in this video have nothing to do with primary component performance. So it doesn't matter how old or weak our graphics card is, it doesn't matter how strong or how weak our CPU is, the tests you'll see are all going to be storage specific. There is one exception, a game benchmark, but I threw that into the mix in order to demonstrate the fact that a slower drive does not affect FPS. That used to be a fairly common belief, maybe not fairly common, but among folks that weren't really PC savvy, they thought that slower drives resulted in lower frame rates. That's just not the case. That said, drives like these can drastically increase game load time. So the buffers in between gaming sessions, let's say you're loading into a new map or doing something that requires data being pulled from the drive in question, having a slower drive like a hard disk drive, even a 7200 RPM one, yes, can result in massive delays. And so regardless of the age of the system, as you'll see in this video, anything a hard disk drive touches takes drastically longer to load. And this is especially magnified when the boot partition is on one. 
one, or even something like a Steam library. Let's kick things off with the very first test, the one that you saw at the beginning of this video, loading into Windows. Now, unless you're one of those folks that never turns off his or her PC, I am one of them, admittedly, you're likely to notice a slower system simply by the way that it boots up. So on the left side of your screen is a one terabyte Western Digital hard disk drive Windows boot up process. 7200 RPM, it's a typical Caviar Blue drive you can find on Amazon for around 35 bucks. And off to the right is another instance of a Western Digital Blue drive, but this one is an SN580. It's an NVMe Gen 4, not the fastest speeds, but for around 60 bucks or so, it packs a heck of a punch. And to keep a level playing field, a few things to note. These are the exact same capacity. They're both installed in the exact same system, albeit not at the same time. They've both recently had fresh Windows 11 installs and the exact same programs have been loaded onto each, including things like Nvidia and chipset drivers, Crystal Disk Mark, and a single Steam game, that being Dirt 5. Ergo, this is about as apples to apples as we could possibly get it. And would you look at here, surprise, surprise, a 60 second boot up for the hard disk drive that's much longer than what it should be, and a 21 second boot up for the NVMe. That's three times faster for a drive that is the same capacity and only costs $20 more. And while we're on the subject of Windows, somewhere else you might notice the speed disparity between these drives is in the installation process. I had to speed this one up a fair bit, and unfortunately my timer only runs to five minutes, so I had to loop it in the case of the hard disk drive, but you can see that it took over twice as long to install Windows 11 on our hard disk drive. And mind you, this is a stripped down Windows 11 install, a de-bloated version that we've covered in a recent video. Had we endured the standard Windows 11 install, the slowness of our hard disk drive would have been exacerbated. And this is a trend you'll notice throughout several of these tests. Whereas on paper, our NVMe is several times faster than our hard disk drive, at least in terms of general reads and writes. In the real world, the law of diminishing returns really starts to kick in around 500 to 1000 megabytes per second. To be clear, this is not me endorsing two and a half inch SATA SSDs in place of equivalent capacity Gen 3 and Gen 4 NVMEs. There is a place for these, but on paper, these are significantly faster and typically don't cost much more. These two and a half inch SATA SSDs cap at around four to 500 megabytes per second, whereas these often cap around four to 5,000. Instead, what I'm trying to say is that you're not gonna magically see a 10X speed difference in everyday Windows use with the much faster Gen 4 drive. It doesn't work that way, especially when we're talking about an operating system like Windows. There are a lot of underlying conditions that are out of your control that will ultimately limit program speed. But near the lower limit, definitely. So in this case here, the hard disk drive on paper is about two to three times slower than the SSD. That tends to translate roughly one for one in everyday Windows use. Consider this test, game load time. So this is Dirt 5. It's not a very heavy game. I mean, compared to something like GTA 5, it shouldn't take very long at all for this game to open. And sure enough, on the SSD side, we hit the parts of the menu we can quickly skip through at around the seven second mark. Compare that to the hard disk drive side, which took over three times longer. So had this been a game like GTA 5, you likely would have waited several minutes at this loading screen here. I know a lot of you know what I'm talking about, especially on older Xbox 360s, which use spinning disk drives, it took quite a while for this game to load. So you can see the case already growing for upgrading from one of these drives. And I wanna be clear again, the price differences are not stark. If they were, I wouldn't be making the same case that I am. It is very easy to migrate from a three and a half inch hard disk drive to either a two and a half inch SATA drive or an NVMe. And something else about these, they are relatively fragile. If you toss one of these around, you might not have your data at the end of the day, but if you did the same for a two and a half inch SATA SSD or something that involves solid state storage, basically memory chips instead of physical disks, you're probably okay. Now, not all is doom and gloom for the three and a half inch drive. I suppose if I was playing devil's advocate here, you could make the case that maybe from a data recovery standpoint, a three and a half inch spinning disk drive like this one is beneficial. If you aren't backing up your data though somewhere else, what are you doing? Whether you're using an SSD or a hard disk drive for said data, back it up, okay? Just back it up. But if we're generalizing, it is typically more likely that data can be recovered from a hard disk drive than an SSD equivalent. There are factors like trim and other things involved that affect the behavior of data on SSDs and admittedly very few hard disk drives as well. And this is why a lot of enterprise solutions will still use spinning disks. In most cases though, a simple backup or two should hedge any bets against the use of SSDs in place of these old things. I suppose though, while we're in the mood for not totally trashing hard disk drives, I'll throw up this test 
best here. Two instances of Dirt 5, the exact same in-game settings. Of course, the game you're looking at is installed on each respective drive here, running at 1080p, medium preset, and the performance difference is non-existent. There is obviously some variance in the way this benchmark is being handled, which is why the numbers aren't totally matching up, but in general, a slower storage drive will not lower your FPS. Now, if we wanna get super technical, we could make the argument that a faster drive is still beneficial in the case where system RAM and VRAM are both depleted, in which case the game will have to draw resources directly from the storage drive in question, ergo you will be limited massively by your drive speed. System and video memory are both leaps and bounds faster than any generic storage drive out today, but I suppose on paper in this very niche circumstance, having a faster drive is better than having a slower one. All that to say, if the system in question is built correctly, the storage drive should have no bearing on the frame rate. But back to real world feel, this is what I wanna focus on as we close out this video. I keep saying the snappiness, the feeling of the operating system. How does it feel faster, Greg? What, what exactly are you talking about? Yeah, you've shown me instances of where programs take longer to load on an equivalent hard disk drive, but what's the big whoop? It's a few seconds here or there. It's not likely to impact my life in any meaningful way. Consider this hodgepodge of opening and closing programs in real time, starting first with something simple like Notepad. If you notice, on the hard disk drive side, even Notepad tends to stutter a little bit before opening. These small lags do add up and make the system feel noticeable slower despite having a high-end CPU installed. Microsoft Edge is next, followed by Steam. These are things that, again, shouldn't take too long. They shouldn't preoccupy the system too much to the point where you can't do anything else in the meantime. But even opening things like Control Panel can seem a little stuttery, a little slow, a little inconsistent in the case of the hard disk drive. Most instances are admittedly subtle, but they do add up. Again, this is part of that smoothness factor that quick kind of snappy attitude that you expect from a brand new system, if you're being handicapped by a slower storage drive, it'll pull the entire rig down with it. The last program I opened in this list was Dirt 5. We stopped at 51 seconds on the SSD side. It took us nearly twice as long to finish the same five program streak with the hard disk drive. That is twice as long to do the same amount of tasks. And that's not really even a super intensive workload. We just opened some basic programs in Windows we opened up Steam, and then we opened up Dirt 5. This is ultimately an efficiency argument. I mean, you are literally wasting time every day you use your PC as long as a hard disk drive is connected to sensitive files, and in this case, especially an operating system. So if you ask me, and with very few exceptions, a hard disk drive like this belongs nowhere near a modern gaming PC. Well, uh, hold on there, Greg. You're getting a little ahead of yourself. See, I've got 16 terabytes of hard disk drive storage, and if I switched to solid state storage, I would literally go broke. That costs a mega ton of money and I don't have that so I'm gonna stick with my spinning disc thank you very much yeah, yeah totally I get that you sound like one of the exceptions right so if you're somebody that loves to have tons of storage at his or her disposal and you only want two or three drives in total and that's gonna cost you a fortune on the SSD side, then I suppose, yeah, stick with hard disk drives, but just don't install Windows on one. Well, Greg, you also have to remember, while sure, hard disk drives can be a little more sensitive, especially during transport, they are easier to pull data from, especially in the event of a drive failure. Yeah, no, I totally get it, but my point still stands. If you have sensitive data on any one hard disk drive or SSD for that matter, it should be backed up somewhere else. And that kind of nullifies the whole data recovery point, unless you're talking enterprise, right? Oh yeah, well, hard drives are still better. Alas, I cannot convince everyone this is the internet after all, but hopefully the simple tests you've seen in this video have at least somewhat swayed you in the direction of SSDs for future gaming PCs. Again, I'm not trying to shame anyone who might already be running Windows on a hard disk drive. We see that even from time to time in the fixer flop playlist, but as a policy prescription going forward, I am strongly recommending that you avoid these drives at, yeah, I'll just say it, pretty much all costs. Very few exceptions, maybe for an especially large Steam library, you want like an eight or 16 terabyte by hard disk drive. Yeah, don't buy an SSD if you're gonna pay double to triple per gig for the SSD equivalent. I don't really think that's worth it. That's gonna be one of those exceptions, right? But if you're like me and you're uninstalling games you don't play and installing ones you intend to, maybe you can work with two or four terabytes of storage, even a two and a half inch SATA, four terabyte SSD. It's gonna be snappier for really any program that you load onto it. You don't have to worry about the fragility of hard disk drives either. Tossing and turning your system around, throwing it into a car, maybe the back of your car if it's being 
being slid around while you're driving aggressively on the freeway. Say you live in a place like LA or I don't know, Miami, and the traffic is just obnoxious, right? You're flooring it, slamming on the brakes, your PC sliding left and right, forward and back. That could damage a hard disk drive, but it probably won't damage a solid state drive. Just another case for one of these or one of these. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this one. Consider giving this a like if you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and checking out relevant links in the video description. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.